In today's Urbanum video, we are sharing our exploration of an abandoned asylum in Wales from spring 2021. The historical complex is one of the last operating Victorian asylums in the country, but the majority of the building lies in disuse, offering a rare insight into mental health treatment in the last century. Join us as we head into the structure to see what remains today. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. It had become a familiar sight for us in our urban exploration careers, the sprawling site of an old asylum, with the notorious features of an imposing water tower, long connecting corridors and various overgrown courtyards. However, these formidable properties are ones we never get bored of. Opening in the 1920s, the district asylum is gargantuan from an overhead perspective, but as for us walking around the facility looking for an access point, we were yet to realise just how big the structure was. On a spring evening in 2021, we were about to find out. Wow, this architecture is a bit different with the pillars. These are definitely cells. Tell by the huge locks on every door. Just very boring, bland rooms. As small sections of the building are still being used for active mental health treatment, getting in undetected and without bothering anybody was of tremendous importance to us. Knowing that the abandoned regions are cut off from the live areas meant that once we had slipped inside, we were free to walk around the hospital without affecting anyone. Ward 6. wonder how many there are in this hospital. Decent staircase. I love the hanging light fixtures. So cool. Not really much in this part of the building at all, but just minimal decay. Wow, look at this. I love it when the paint's chipping down into a carpet. Yeah. It's probably the most dramatic peeling paint I've seen, actually. Yeah. These corridors with the checkered floors are quite amazing. They're very different to anything I've seen before. And they hardly look abandoned, to be honest, for the most part. These are all the dryers. They're quite modern compared to a lot that we've seen in asylums. Yeah, there's even more. Such a classic asylum feature. Yeah. These corridors are incredible. The subtle arches and this checkered floor makes them really special. I've never seen anything like it in an asylum before. Oh, 
I've got a bed left here. Classic asylum kind of feature. Our past experiences with these properties tended to deliver with the endless hallways that seemed to transport us back in time. But these corridors especially, with the asbestos tiled flooring and minimal decay, were simply extraordinary. Hospital chapel. It's very modern. It's stripped, but I imagine they'd have maybe three or four rows of pews. It's quite similar to the one we saw in the um, North Staffordshire Hospital. That I can name now because it's well and truly demolished. Lovely bay windows, looking out over a nice overgrown garden. It would have been so lovely back in its day. These huge old trees, but now it's totally dilapidated and vacant. This is an interesting corridor with these wooden ornate features on the side. The way the sunlight's coming in. A lot of the rooms in this place are empty. So we're kind of just looking for that have bits of interest in. They're very stripped. And um, especially on the bottom floor, all the windows are boarded, so it's quite dark too. This place is like a maze. Definitely a children's part of the hospital. All the doors are decorated with little insects and children related stuff. There was one particular spot in the asylum that we desperately wanted to find. Assuming it would reside centrally, we headed towards the middle in search of it. Holy shit. This is the main hall. They still had their Christmas decorations in. Right? I think it's been partitioned, so if we go through here... Yeah, it continues and changes colour scheme completely. My God. Despite the partition that was probably added only a couple decades before the hall went defunct, the architecture was still as good as it gets for derelict asylums. Reminiscent of the Irish asylum we shared last year, the space included a magnificent arch and detailed stained glass windows. Back in its originality, performances, shows and talks would be held here, yet more recently it was possibly used as a gym. Lying above us was a decaying projector room that looked over the hall, but even though no equipment remained now, it would turn out to be sealed anyway. Old footage from other asylums shows the scandalous conditions that patients were admitted into for centuries before the Deinstitutionalisation Act of the 1970s was passed in the UK. Overcrowding, mistreatment and poor sanitisation were common practices in most mental hospitals, and in many cases much darker events took place. 
In the Welsh Asylum, there are reports of the limited treatments used to suffering patients, which often relied on sedation and isolation. At a maximum, the psychiatric facility could hold over 600 men and women, but lacked room for personal belongings or privacy. Mental health treatment has improved drastically in the last 30 years, arguably more than anything else in the medical system. Yet the history is important to consider for us, when we are walking through what remains of these structures now, that many feared ever stepping foot inside for years. This bed here seems to have someone's belongings on it. The floor is really bad, as you can hear, but I wonder if everything on this bed was dedicated to the person that used it last. So there's a stage behind me, but then in here we seem to have a load of gym equipment. Perhaps it was just being stored for now, but if this was here originally, then I'm really not sure what the use of this partition part would be. Or documents. The more we come this way, the more you can hear the sounds of electricity, which indicates that we're getting closer and closer to the bit of this hospital that's not so abandoned. Another lovely bay window. And this is probably missing from the canteen. I doubt this was the canteen, but maybe actually. It's very stripped, but this looks like um, the bit that the trays would go on when collecting food and there are kitchens in there, maybe a smaller canteen, I assume there's a bigger one. These are definitely the kitchens. So by the floor. Wow. Pretty cool to be fair with this skylight. And it's very stripped. There's hardly any actual kitchen equipment in here. Looks like we found the main reception. About half of them work. Oh, this is really cool. Power as well. By the arches. Yeah. Common occurrence in parts. The admin part of the hospital that we are entering now shut more recently than anything else, hence the good condition and working electricity. This is security's office right next to reception. All the power's on in this part for some reason, but the computer won't come on. As the main entrance for visitors to the asylum, it was complete with many ornate details that had managed to survive. This is a really nice window. The banister too. According to the map, this is supposed to be doctors, uh, offices and lounges. The curves are really nice up there in the archways. 
pastel theme colour with the mould just makes it it's really atmospheric. Doctor's lounge. Main area for all the doctors here at the asylum. Like many asylums of the time, following deinstitutionalization, where patients were moved from hospitals into the community, it began to wind down in capacity since the 1980s. In the mid-2000s, construction started on site to build newer blocks with updated facilities to house patients, and it seems that much of the old building wasn't required anymore, with it being unfit for purpose. One of the wards got a couple of the uh, patient bedrooms. Seems like a much older part of the building with these doors. It does. Oh, this is a nice room. It's a shame it's just been boarded, but maybe a communal space. Yeah. As daylight faded, we were finishing up our exploration to ensure we hadn't missed any interest. Certain areas, like an intact x-ray room, had been locked up, unfortunately, but we had managed to see everything else. This is pretty cool, the open doors. And the wallpaper. Seems like a more old-fashioned ward than some of the others we've seen. After our visit in 2021, when few knew of the disused parts of the asylum, more urban explorers caught wind of the psychiatric hospital's dereliction, and news broke that some had allegedly forced entry into the building last year, causing an increase in security. It's a shame that it had to go this way, with what had been a peaceful, half-unknowing exchange between the two groups for years, before the masses found out and couldn't take no for an answer. Nevertheless, we were glad we had managed to see another part of the UK's asylum history for ourselves. As mentioned earlier, we think it is vital to capture these specific structures whilst they still remain, and give attention to their horrific pasts that stripped patients of dignity and self-worth. With the sun setting, we departed the premises, looking back at the building to see it cloaked in shadow, a reminder of the darkness that occurred inside, a lot of it to never see the light of day. Here are some of our photographs captured at the abandoned asylum. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page in the description, where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We hope you found interest in this documentary, albeit a more significant one. We have big plans for the summer that is soon to be announced. See you next time.